looking into a camera lens is a strangely unsettling experience. I know that I definitely get self-conscious if anyone points a camera at me. I'm kind of like, oh, like what's, what are you doing? So it's hardly surprising that when I've interviewed people for a documentary, they'll answer the questions, but they don't always let their guard down and speak the way they do when the cameras aren't around. So how can we interview someone in a way that's natural? That's what I want to figure out. So let's go behind the scenes of an interview I've shot recently to look at how we filmed it and see if we can foster a relaxed environment even though there's a camera in the room. So once we've met and got to know our documentary character or subject, we'll need to write down some questions to ask them. My goal is to make each question reveal something important about our character or their situation. Yes, that is absolutely essential. Maybe you can have that above. Um, oh no, it's telling the story first. It seems like many of the most effective questions are the simple ones. Why do you think this happened? Or the beautifully open follow-up question, how did that make you feel? If in doubt, I'll ask about things that went wrong, surprises and mistakes, because there aren't that many great stories written about things going smoothly. So once I've honed down my list of questions, I'll put them in an order that makes sense and mark a few in bold, the ones that I shouldn't skip if we start to run out of time. Then I'll print it out so I don't need to be looking at a screen during the conversation. On the day of the interview, I'll start with composition by scouting our location. For this interview, I'm looking for an area with space for two tripods, two chairs and any other gear we're using, while also giving us a suitable background for both camera angles. Now suitable is pretty subjective, but in general I'm looking for something with a bit of depth so I won't place the character right up against a wall. I'll also put some thought into the connotations of the room itself. On this shoot our options were very limited due to the pandemic, but usually we can choose any place where our character will feel relaxed that also makes sense for the story. And of course part of that is the sound quality, so I wouldn't have even considered filming in this room until I knew that we could temporarily turn off that noisy fridge. For the camera work, today I'm going for a pretty classic setup. One wider shot, which is our main angle, as close to the interviewer's chair as possible, so our subject's eye line is very close to the camera. And then I set a second camera to film a medium close-up with a tighter lens, so we have more options in the edit. For both angles though, I used pretty standard composition, the interviewee facing towards the centre of the frame, and the light coming from the other side. Now for lighting, I usually enjoy shooting in the available light, but over the course of a long interview, the clouds and the sun tend to move gradually and it's really hard to keep a constant exposure. So for these long conversations, I much prefer to set up my own lights. Now, Godox sent me a couple of their UL150s for this project and these are fanless LEDs, so I can place them as close to the microphone as I like without any buzzing or humming ruining the audio. So I start off by attaching a softbox and setting it nice and close, which makes the light source brighter and softer. Quite a photogenic look. But this interview is part of an ongoing documentary project I'm working on, and we've shot most of it in natural light. So I'm not sure that this kind of studio look fits. With time running out, I decide to quickly try something. I remove the softbox, flip the light around and bounce it instead. My hope is that this will look more natural since the light is reflecting a variety of colours in all directions rather than just coming through the pristine softbox. Plus I think this setup must be less intimidating for the interviewee now they don't have a big light that's in their personal space. So to finish the look I'll set up a backlight that's also illuminating the background and I'll use some tin foil and clips to flag the direct light so it's only hitting our interviewee. And there's our setup. Let's see how it looks and sounds. Days just fly by, and like, I, I don't even was it Monday today? I, nah, I don't know. So it was a couple of weeks ago. Now, since I'm only beginning to understand how to host a truly relaxed interview, I thought I'd ask my friend Seb, who's been making documentaries for longer than me, about his process. I think it's our job to really make them feel comfortable and make them feel relaxed in this environment. What I like to do is rather than uh, having a chat and making them feel very comfortable and kind of getting to know each other a bit, and then suddenly put a camera in their face and go, action, or you say, okay, let's go. That then puts up a, a wall between you and the, the character. You can just literally see that person transform from being comfortable to frozen in a matter of seconds. And so I find it so important as well to do that transition. For example, this interview, it's just like a normal chat and you, you kind of keep that same tone. I think Seb is absolutely right. Smoothing that transition into the first question 
makes such a big difference. We can lead by example rather than drawing attention to the official start of the interview. And I guess that applies to the questions too. We're both talking about how we don't like to just read through the questions one by one. You have to be flexible and ask follow-up questions. But sometimes we will need to direct the conversation. So I was curious to hear how Seb keeps things on track. So for me, it all depends on your character and the person you're interviewing. So if it's a character that is really nervous and finds this really challenging and difficult to be interviewed, then I will step back a lot more and just listen and be like, okay, I'm going to have to make this work in the edit. Whereas if it's someone who's really confident on camera, then I'm more willing to uh, direct them a bit more and say, okay, can you say it this way? Can you do it this way? So it all depends on, on the person and, and the way that they um, feel on camera. The more we spoke about it, the more I realized how much intuition is involved, how much of it is about reading the room and adapting to the person you're talking to. But how do you know when you've got enough footage? So I think it, there's like almost an arc in, a, in an interview conversation. And you'll often notice at the beginning, it's a kind of a bit um, stilted and it takes time to warm up. And then you slowly build it up to about uh, maybe 45 minutes into the conversation where uh, they're a bit more warmed up and they're feeling comfortable and they're in a flow state and at that instance you can start asking like the really important uh, questions that are vital to the, the story and then after a bit of time of asking those questions you might start to notice that they lose a bit of energy and then you want to finish off at that point with a positive question so that they feel happy and uplifted and are keen to uh, be interviewed again. I'm so fascinated by the whole interview process. It was great to be able to overanalyze it with another filmmaker. So once we're done filming for the day, I like to note down the highlights of the conversation and if there's anything we need to follow up on later. And finally, I like to think about how I got on, which questions were the most effective and was there anything that seemed to really help with the candid conversational atmosphere or anything that kind of messed it up all of that is very useful to think about so i can improve for next time so on that note if you'd like to share any of your experiences with filming interviews then please do let me know i'd love to read that in the comments and i'll see you next time <laughs>